Hello, everyone. Happy Friday. Thank you so much for tuning in to another reading with the Actors Quarantine Collective. That's what we are. If this is your first time here on the YouTube channel, please subscribe, press the red button right there. Leave comments, leave thumbs up. This is our way of feeling your energy during this performance. We have a great reading today of an original piece by one of our members, Stephen Olson, who had another play earlier this week. And we're back with more. So without further ado, I'm gonna introduce Stephen, who's gonna let him let us uh, tell us about his play. Hi, I'm Stephen Olson uh, out in Reseda, California. The play is the director's cut. And I just wanted to play around with the ideal of an actor maybe getting too far into his, his part. Uh, so without further ado, let's have the actors come on and we can start the play. Hello everyone, my name is Mariana Esqueda and I'll be reading for Catherine. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, my name is Gabrielle Lovero and I'll be reading for the role of Daisy. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Natalia Minachan and I'll be reading for the role of Daniel Cody. Hi, my name is Patrick Piclar, and I'll be reading the for the role of Carl Holt. Hello there, I'm Maury Shore. I'll be reading the role of Larson. Interior, studio office space. There's a large table with several actors seated around it. They all have a script in front of them, and they're reading through the script. Okay, okay, let's get started. Now you all have the final revisions. Let's go over these changes so we're all Wait, wait, revisions? I've been rehearsing all weekend. What changed? I just wanted to tighten up some scenes. Tighten up? Where is the scene? Which scene? The scene with Myrtle and Nick. Oh, you still have scenes with Myrtle. Yeah, but what about our scene when we first get together? All of that just seemed so cliche. I don't think it works. Doesn't the story pivot on the affair? The affair is a pivotal point, but it doesn't have to be between my fiance and a hack writer. Hack? Hack writer? Who says I'm a hack writer? Carl, darling, it's not you. It's Nick. Nick's the hack. Look, I know it's the character, but I'm... He is not a hack. He's extremely talented, and that's why you, I mean, Myrtle, falls in love with him. Myrtle would never fall for a writer. She's in love with one of the greatest directors in Hollywood. I made her a star. So where's the pivotal affair? Page 12. Hell? I have an affair with, with Jordan? Yes. But, but Jordan, we are a writing team. We are a writing team and, and she's, she's my sister. Far less cliche. And far more crazy. Who would have an affair with my sister? I'm in love with Daisy. Myrtle, I mean, Nick is in love with Myrtle. Myrtle is in love with me. I built her career. She realizes what a hack you are and discovers your complete insatiable dependency on your sister and realizes what a failure it would be to stay involved with you. And the writers are okay with these changes? Well, that's up to you and Jordan. No, I mean the writers of the original script. What? You mean you didn't write this? And this is the kind of hack you want to have an affair with? Carl's not... Carl, you're not a hack. Larson, I'm not a writer, I'm an actor. Jordan is not, I mean, Catherine is not a writer, she's an actor. Jordan, I mean, Catherine, please someone tell him. Mm, well, I don't know, these changes are okay with me. What? You can't be serious. Well, the thing is, I kind of felt my role was very limited, but now I have more lines and I feel like my part is more meaty. Meaty? 
You actually think it's okay for a brother and sister to have sex? Are you, you are all right with this concept. Well, it's just one scene. And I... It does give me more screen time. There, you see, it all works out for everyone. But what about the idea that an over-the-hill director in the downward spiral of his career begins to corrupt the life of the one he loves and forces her to fall, to find solace in the arms of the emotionally open and gifted writer? For one thing, I am the greatest living director in Hollywood. Even though my loving fiance may forsake me, I will forgive her because she will soon learn that the corruption lies in a sexually degenerative, failing writer who wants to use Myrtle's success to boost his own miserable career. Myrtle is redeemed by coming back to the one who built her career and would do anything to gain her love. And that person is me, me. I love Myrtle more than any man could ever love a woman. It will never be you. You will never have her. Never! I see it now. I knew you would. Yeah, I understand what is going on. It's... It's the broken night all over again. Carl, you're not supposed to bring that up. Broken night? What's that? It was the last film we all worked on together. I don't remember seeing it. That's because it was never released. Everything shut down after the lead actress disappeared. Oh, was that Leslie Hamilton? The one who disappeared five years ago? Yes, and our greatest director of all time was not a director then, he was a serial killer in Broken Night. At least until his leading lady disappeared. Nothing was ever proven. No one knows what happened to Leslie. All we know is that Larson here really got into character. He started wearing the trench coat all the time and we're still not sure what was served at the barbecue at his house and I still don't know what happened to my cat. I have no idea why we are discussing some other project. Why can't you just accept you will never be man enough for Martha? She will only love me. That's it. I'm done. I need a break. I'm going to my trailer and learn these new lines and maybe, maybe this will be the, my last film with the greatest director of who ever lived. I guess I should go help him prepare for the next scene. I'm sure he'll settle into character, eventually. I, I am very happy with the changes. I think I'll go rehearse for the next scene. I... If you need assistance, I would be glad to go over the lines with you. We can rehearse in my private trailer. I know Myrtle would not mind me helping you. We have a very secure relationship now that Nick is out of the picture. No, no. It's a very generous offer, but I prefer rehearsing on my own. I understand. But if you ever do need anything from me, do not hesitate to ask. Yes. Yes, uh, thank you. I'll, I'll just run off. Uh, see you soon. Great. Let's wrap that up. Okay, let's prep the lights for the next scene. Uh, we're going to do another one in 30 minutes. Oh, Larson, great scene. Your delivery was really believable. Just great. Oh, why don't you take some time to relax? You're not even in the next scene. You could go home for the day. Oh, I should go home? But I'm the director. I'm directing the next scene. No, the next scene is between Nick and your fiancé. Well, not your fiancé, but the director's fiancé. I am the director. Yes, Larson, you are the director. But right now you're taking a break, getting some rest. Hmm? Whew. It's the serial killer all over again. Well, what can you do when you want the best? I just hope we get through this without fatalities. Okay, um, strike the lights, get the next scene up, and remember, whatever anyone says, I am the director. All of you will be taking your orders from me. We're going to get this done today, woo! 
Oh, actors. <clears throat> Why is it the great ones have to be so fucking crazy? The exits. Lights off. A great short one to start off the weekend. We have lots of great readings coming up, so stay tuned to the Actors Quarantine Collective. Please subscribe, like, leave comments, reach out if you'd love to get involved. We're so excited to be here um, and be sharing theater with you in this crazy time. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay creative, make art, have fun, be a child. All right, take care. We'll see you all soon. Actors, why is it the great ones have to be so fucking crazy? White space. Yay! Cool. Thanks. <laughs> uh, there's not a there's not a there's not an ounce of truth in that. Um,